Yes, siree. Another Sunday live chat. Welcome, everybody. And today, uh, welcome the very special guest from Vancouver, the legendary Eye Brain Eater, aka Jim Cummins. Hey, Jim. Hey, hey, Kevin. Welcome. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I have to say, out of all of the people in Vancouver that I was hoping that I would get a chance to speak to in this series, you are definitely you are definitely on the top of my hope list oh, one day thanks you know this is this, yeah. this is my first time ever doing anything like this so please excuse my whatever <laughs> like, here we go yeah i'm excited yeah well we'll try to... back right you know oh my god how far i remember us having lunch at the mill you remember When's that? The first... when, when was that remember having lunch together at the mill you that restaurant upstairs on Robson Street, that fancy one that was all kind of like um like a, a, a an old movie with the the spacey set, you know the uh, oh God, I forgot the name of the famous one, you, you know it. Um, but we go up, we went up there and we ate, we had a lunch, you know. This is this is I mean, am I getting to the point finally where my memory is 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 <laughs> is like it's like fading all of a sudden? It's like it's like. I, I can't remember what you were having, but I do remember you were complaining about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, it was like I was on Robson Street there, and it was all done like uh, the ancient um, Metropolis movie. That's what it, was. it kind of had that cut to it and stuff like this. You know, ceilings were cut at angles and low and big open and stuff like this, and they served the arty food of the day. Okay. I mean, <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> my first meetings of, of you, I mean, I kind of like um, go back to that warehouse you had back in Gastown, way back in, um, in, in, the, in the days when a punk guy could occupy like a whole floor of a warehouse in yeah, what is yeah. now like a prime residential uh, real estate area. Well, yeah. I mean, well, you know, like the Gastown one was so weird because it, it would turn out, um, well, if you didn't pay your rent on time in cash you would meet the landlord's helpers shall we say and they would help you pay the rent and uh, <laughs> and then once we hit before yale town was the uh stale town and all its fanciness we had a studio there on the second or third floor it was just kind of a small you know 300 square foot space we were renting but i discovered i could break through the wall and I did, and the hole behind that was nothing but open for a whole city building block with windows all around. And I actually put my uh, bed in there, right in the center of it. And <laughs> I slept with a baseball bat, just like in the movies, you know? And uh, that was pretty amazing. That was a fun place to entertain, shall we say. I guess you, you must be the first person to miss like the old days of Vancouver for these spaces that you could have. I remember you having a number of different spaces that were unique. Um, yeah, yeah, I had some very good ones. Uh, the last one was uh, the one on Beatty Street, which was like, uh, it wasn't that wide. It was only about 13, 14 feet wide, but it was like 90 feet long or so. And, and it had a hallway that was like about six feet wide by about 30 feet into it. And so we had lots of art shows there. We had, you know, crazy art shows, you know, and, and I lived there, worked there, you know, friends stayed with me there. We had a a really you know a pretty good time but you know even before that the studios were kind of neater and wilder because nothing would last more than maybe a month or two or six months right and then the the, the police or the fire department would come along and go uh-uh boys out of here you know uh i could get away with it pretty good because I, I came up with the idea um made these great big uh canvas well these great big plywood paintings that were up against the wall but actually what they were they were beds and at night, we'd flop them down from the wall. And we'd, I, ha, I have a bed, right? And then first rule, before, as you got up, it has to go up in case we get raided by the fire department. And a few times we did. And they, 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 they would come in, they look around, and I'd go, oof, oof, puff, puff, puff. You, woo, woo. You had a hot plate. Yeah, well, make a coffee or two. You know, it's expensive, you know. And then go out. And then, well, okay, well, you're not, where, are you, where, where are your beds? Well, we don't live here, sir. You know, and eventually they'd go, hmm. Oh, okay, and they'd leave. And, <laughs> and we could get, get away really good with that one. Yeah, I remember um, 
I was I briefly moved into that building on the other end uh, right away. It was I think I was the first person to live in the apartment. Um, I, I think you were the first person to move into your, your space as well, right? Mm -hmm. We got it at the beginning. Oh yeah, yeah, you were in there yeah. too. I remember. Yes, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem you got was, in trouble for noise. I did. Yeah. And what was is that the lady downstairs didn't move in there to be an artist? She was moved in there to be like like an elitist or something. And oh, so the, the, the building would always wind up mostly that yeah. way. If you turned on your TV or something, she would complain. But yeah, it was a, what a great building that was. Oh, it was. That was great. Yeah. I mean, I would literally, someone would complain about me and I would literally take a hammer and start hammering on the floor. You thought you heard noise from me before? I'll yeah, show you right. what noise is, you know? Was, and they would was, move out. And I, I got to finish this one. They would move out. And the landlord noticed that every time someone moved out below me, he was able to raise the rent another notch. <laughs> so I discovered after a while, there was no complaint that way. From the yeah, landlord. Right. Just move them along, son. Move them along. So I went through like about eight or ten people in that place. Eventually, uh, you must have had someone tolerant move in downstairs and know what type of artwork was going on upstairs and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I had a really good couple. Good. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it would work out okay. Yeah, yeah. And I and I would lighten up after a while. Usually, when I go on those rampages, it was when someone had like your thing too. Like you turned on. The TV and they're complaining, you know, and and they're just like not even, you know, playing fair. So if you want to you want to play, I can play. You know, what's the game? You know, but things things weren't always in downtown Vancouver. What's funny is that um, you're a Langley boy, aren't you? Originally, I was Langley, yeah, yeah, you know, because right. yeah, you know, the farm out there, and and well, Dad was the horse trainer in an Exhibition Park. Ah, oh, there is Dad. Yeah. Hey, Dad. Yeah, that yeah, back when he when he was a youngin. Yeah. So he, he, he loved the horses and uh, that was that, you know, and so he'd always be at the track um, doing that track thing, you know, and I was in Langley doing artwork and I mean, I got out of high school, I actually opened up a little store. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, see, I had a sense of humor even back then, you know, once upon a time. 51, and, 51 years ago. My God. <laughs> How did that happen? First, you know, first uh, pieces, I know it's a segment of it. Uh... I don't, where'd you find that? Oh God, this from yeah, the in, That's actually at the family house on the farm upstairs because I had the upstairs. You can see it's kind of a peak ceiling, and those were paintings I was doing then. Yeah. So, what was the impetus that that, that originally got you inspired to start painting? Um, well, uh, oh, that that that's the um, Queen Elizabeth Theater. We got a show there. And that was my partner in crime, Steve Laviolette. He was in the band and then did artwork with me. Uh, there's, a, um, there's a sculpture I did that was actually still in Langley days as a kid, you know? Um, I just, it, you know, I would have to say almost as a kid, uh, Steve Laviolette with one of our um, sculpture things we were doing, we got a great write-up by... Uh, Scott Watson, who wound up being the uh, head of the UBC art department later on, but he had come to that show we had there and he loved it. There I met some high school Langley thing, you know, doing my thing, you know, it's like hair once again has returned. And uh, yeah, fantasy paintings then, you know. Totally cool looking dude, if you ask me. There we go. There I'm, I think there I'm up in Horseshoe Bay. I was working on my art show for uh, at the Brackendale Art Gallery when I eventually built the unicorn at. And what happened was uh, there was a lady down this street in the town of Horseshoe Bay, Judy Weiser, great photographer and runs a clinic now where she does phototherapy with children and stuff like this in Vancouver. And she said, I have to take some pictures of you. And I went, sure, you got it. So that's where that came from. That's a great photo of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, again, Steve Laviolette and me, uh, we did everything from classical paintings to cartoon pieces. Again, that was at the Queen Elizabeth Theater. And- um, Is that Steve-O? No, not Steve-O. This is Steve Laviolette, Steve Love. Oh, okay. And Steve, Steve and me were the ones that first bought the Jupiter 8, the 808 and, and stuff. And we were okay. doing shows with that stuff, yeah. And uh, I've at the racetrack, you know, uh, the owners would uh, say, Jimmy, paint my race, my winning race picture. And I go, sure. <laughs> so the, the, those are pretty easy, kind of like a little bit of quick photorealism and paint them about so big. And, and they loved them. That was fun to do. You know? 
Yeah. Look at Igor. Igor, yeah. Uh, some horse named Igor. So I, th I think I, I asked you a second ago, but um, what was the original inspiration for you to pick up a brush? Was there anything that happened? Well, um, someone else. Something, that, something to do. I mean, uh, being an only child, a lot of time alone. And um, and I used to, you know, I, I started drawing actually when I was like two or three, you know, and dad was relatively encouraging about it. Oh, there's another one of Judy's pictures there she took of me. And uh, so I just did it and did it. And of course, as a kid, you know, you love your car models and your, you know, monster things and so this, that's okay. Now here we have, uh, we have Kathy, we have Kathy, we have Bill Shirt um, from um, the Popularos. We have Buck Cherry, John Armstrong, who had had the modernettes and stuff. And then we have Art Bergman who had, was Art Bergman, the Young Canadians, k -Tells, Poisoned, and all that, you know. Was, was this um, one of your first things, uh, making flyers for Art, Art Bergman's? Uh, yeah, stores? that was the thing. I was, we were in high school. Well, he wasn't in my high school. I think he was out of high school. And he was over in Cloverdale, and I was in Langley. And we had a mutual friend called Dan Clark, who was a true genius of a human being, like amazing soul. Uh, he's gone, but I wish he was here because he was amazing. And he said, Jim, you're going to make the posters. I'm going to book the shows. And this is a band called the Mount Lehman Grease Band. And I went, oh, okay. You know, because I've been through a couple <laughs> of gigs, you know, and there was literally, usually 10 people at him, you know, so they, whatever. Okay. So I go and do the poster and, and I'm doing the door that night. And, and there I am. And all of a sudden, truckloads of kids are showing up. It looks like a movie, you know, it's just like literally on flatbed trucks with gallons of wine and stuff like this, just literally out of control. And this, we filled up the Fernridge Hall with like 300 people. The place held barely 100 people. It was a little tiny place. And it was just craziness. And, and Dan, who was uh, um, supposed to be the manager of everything, goes, Jim, I just did three hits of acid. I'm out of control. Wee-hee! And I went, <laughs> oh, great. And I have all these crazed kids in front of, I was a kid too, but you know, just like going, get out of my way, we're coming in, you know, and so, so I just went, you know what, hell with this. I abandoned the door and joined the show. And, <laughs> and we had the best fabulous time ever. It was super crazy. And we did many shows like that. It was, they, it was really something, it was totally a few years before punk hit, you know, so, um, and, but they were really crazy. It, they were marvelous days. Yeah. It seems like, you know, uh, Art Bergman, Buck Cherry and yourselves are really, you know, kind of like the forefront sculptors of Vancouver punk rock scene. Could you see that coming along and realize this is something that you needed to? You yeah, need to well, even when I was Langley and I was doing the shows and stuff like that with the grease band and stuff, um, there was an energy, like a peculiar, super duper type of fantastic energy you don't see normally. And right. then uh, that had kind of faded and so this and I'd gone up to up the coast and I was doing the uh, art shows in Brackendale and building the, the big unicorn there and things like that. And, and then, but that was kind of the, and then I was actually painting a giant dragon painting at the old roller rink in North Vancouver before people who had it, uh, I met them in Horseshoe Bay too, before it kind of money went wrong and it had to close. But by then the punk scene had seen, I mean, not the punk scene, but that, you know, the valley scene had come and gone. The hippie scene was watering down. They were getting old. It wasn't really the hoot anymore. You didn't end up, no magic energy. And then I moved downtown. I moved into the Florida apartments down in the West End. Buck moved in down the street in a little little room. And then one night, I won't make a long story, but uh, uh, I was supposed to meet a girlfriend out in Langley. I'd done a mural for a uh, for a, a restaurant, it was like a pirate ship thing. So about this, you know, I'd done all the clouds around the pirate ship, but, uh, and I couldn't find my keys to go out and meet her there. And she got furiously mad at me and said, hung up on me and ended our relationship because she <laughs> thought I was up to no good. And then John came over and he said, well, why are you so depressed? And I went, um, well, duh. And then he said, oh, no problem. I know where a punk rock party is and I have a bottle of rum and we're going. And so we crawled out my window and we went off and I actually took my camera. I got pictures of Randy Rampage who was about 17 and some of this other people. And it was the most exciting, explosive night I had ever experienced. And basically to make a long story short, um, that was fabulous. And, and John opened me up to the whole world of the punk rock scene. That was just, just new exploding in Vancouver, but it had an energy, a particular 
buzz again where I went, no, yeah, and we play there at the Smiling Buddha. And he went, all of a sudden, yeah, this is where it's going to be. This is, and and it really was. And, and then that exploded in the fact that Vancouver wasn't really um, a big enough city, being a seaport city and stuff like this. So if we were going to have, there we are at the Buddha, that's a Trevor and that's Evo. Um, that was the second Brain Eater band, more of the arty one with the art school guys, you know. I never went to art school, but I went to the parties. But basically, <laughs> then, then uh, uh, yeah, that a night at the Buddha, you know. I, uh, I swear I recognize all those guys. Huh? I swear yeah. I recognize some of those guys. I know, I know. You just, uh, <laughs> I think that's genius over there. Uh, it looks like Rampage, but it's uh, yeah, that not. looks like about a yeah. That could be in there. Yeah, I remember that guy. I can't remember who he was. <laughs> Uh, it go yeah it, it don't take long and it starts to come back you know and um so or oh, we know that guy there's, there's zippy yeah uh-huh we just lost him last year uh r.i.p to zip yeah and then so basically um we'd have these shows and gigs in South Vancouver from the Smiling Buddha the other places and after our parties and warehouses and the scene was never big enough to get one one group could handle it so all these different groups came together from everywhere from the you know the gay scene to the to the ska scene to the punk scene to you know and and it was like a watering hole like the animals at the watering hole we'd all get along and have these great nights that were really fantastic explosions actually that's steve and me and we are playing at this club called bj's it's underground and behind Fender <laughs> Street. And, and it was a couple lovely gay guys that owned it. And and Steve came back one day and he said, you know, they got showers in there and, and we can use it because we had a student that didn't really have a, a shower set up. You know, it's a, and, and they said, we can come and use their showers anytime and, and their facilities. And I went, Steve, mm -mm. <laughs> no, <that's, laughs> no, 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 no. If you want to, you're welcome to. But mm -hmm. and he went, oh, oh, I forgot. Oh, oh right, okay. <laughs> so it, it was fabulous times. We played there like three nights in a row one time. Yeah, Steve again, and we were doing like artwork like that. That was one of his, you know. Um, this is still, you know. Oh, that that is from the uh, John Buck and me are living in the basement of the Manhattan next door to the boiler room. It was literally like Freddy Krueger movies, you know, it was uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Literally, I could crawl through a little door in my room into the boiler room, which was wow. a furnace that heated the whole building. It was ancient. The pipes were so hot, you couldn't dry towels on them that ran through our place. It would actually just burn them. You know? Hang your dues, that's what they call it, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, 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 on Did's Pizza I, on Robson Street. Uh, me and Carmen, uh, my girlfriend back then. And, Can you believe uh, that? It looks like um, it just looks like, uh, like 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 an old, just an old '60s movie or something. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, well, you know, life. With, you know, hey, there, there. I'm at the Buddha. There's Buck playing. Uh, we've got Dave Gregg from DOA. He's playing. He was in the first Brain Eater band. Um, so was it you, you, Dave Gregg, Buck Cherry, and uh, was Art Bergman ever in the? I think his head thing may be Art Bergman. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually had him on Farfisia organ. And, and, you, you, and we had Ian Tiles on drums from Point Oh, of wow. What a, what a great band. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was, and we put out the first record. Uh, yeah, there I am. Uh, looks that's, like. Uh, that looks like the Buddha. That's the Buddha. And, and it's looks like someone spilt their drink on their dress. And, and I've got a bit of a. Um, uh, Showtime makeup on. Uh, I think that was the, the little uh, the romantic stage of the whole thing. We didn't know they were punk or club kids at that time. So did you did you play um, Gambados with DOA? Gambados. What was Gambados? Gambados was like a brick room, and I swear. Well, that was the first time that I thought I ever saw you. Was that with uh -huh. DOA and you at at this place called Gambados? God, but, you know, the, 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 that's something. Not, now you got me. I can't remember that one. Uh -huh. it, <laughs> but I'll get pictures every now and then that come that, up. And, and I'll go, I don't remember that night. Yeah. That's me there, but I don't remember nothing. That was from <laughs> UBC. We were playing UBC that night. 
and uh, Steve there. And we had Ron Rays from Black Flag um, and uh, Steve. And oh, there's Carmen and me at one of my art shows at the Helen Pit. Look at the people in the background there. It just oh, looks yeah. like you couldn't, you just couldn't cast something so so true to form these days, could you? No, well, I think that was it. And there we are at UBC again, you know. There, there's Ron Ray's on the right hand side, Stephen so left me in the middle there. Uh, and we were oh, using the, using the Jupiter 8 and 808, and uh, Ron was uh God, guitar, I think. Yeah, it looks like guitar. I, yeah. I remember that's the black Jupiter 8, isn't it? Or maybe, yeah, no, maybe that's the black before. Jupiter 8, yeah. The only people that I've ever known to paint all of their equipment black, but still know how to use them. <laughs> like you couldn't read any of the control. No, no, no. It was, we, it was so awesome. We, we were a bit feral show. about all that and just went, what the hell? Well, I basically, they were playing an alleyway. That's the second band. That's with, uh, 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 there's uh, Trevor down there playing bass. Bass. I'm on the guitar. Evil's on drums, and his dr and then our monolithic <laughs> drum speakers that I made that make them all oddball shapes and stuff. There they are. Oh, awesome. And 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 Evil is it playing off the back of his truck? Actually, it's in the deck of the truck. The drum set. And that's a great awesome. great shot in the alleyway. That was behind cabbages and kinks and that blood alleyway thing. I guess. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah classic you couldn't get away with this anymore could you no 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 not at all you know did, did you have a permit to do this no 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 you know you just, you just rolled up yeah you just you know in those days everything was just just do it you know until they tell you not to you know uh i think i'm at the buddha there i can't see my cavities the classic old times man oh god yeah no we were um Things were happening so fast and so fantastic that it says, oh, yeah, the, there I'm in a miniskirt, playing at Smiling Buddha, because Simon <laughs> Clant basically, we were a bunch of wimps. And I said, am I a wimp if I, if I play if I play wearing a miniskirt? And he went, well, no, you wouldn't do it. So next time we had the show, I showed up in the miniskirt. Simon loved it. Uh, and we became buddies ever, ever after that, you know. And there's there's Trevor, me, uh, you know, the, uh, Evo and Steve, you know. Uh, I was shot by Sandra Pajera. Um, how many of these my people girlfriend have, back then? How many of these people are still alive? Well, we lost Steve on the day the shuttle first, the shuttle blew up in 86. Uh, he had uh, dropped his girlfriend off in North Vancouver, Feline, and she was working in a club in North Vancouver. And he had just had a, I don't know whether he, uh, coffee or something that morning with, with Randy Rampage because his girlfriend was working the same place you know club yeah and uh he had come across the iron workers bridge and somehow he clipped a, a semi clipped him or something happened caused his Volvo the spin and sadly I didn't have a seat belt on got thrown out and under the car and it was the end of him gods yeah it was really sad because we hadn't been working for the last couple of years he'd been down in california with ron rays and stuff and was back and said we got to get back together we got to work again because we were we liked what we're working together you know so we were gonna we were just getting together for that you know over that period and then i heard that and he was gone yeah very sad that was sad i, I remember seeing um trevor play at um at univis um yeah he did a solo show by himself. Yeah. And when I, when I saw that, that was the impetus for me to think, well, maybe this weird stuff that me and Ogre were making would go mm -hmm. down under this setting. So it was like, um, definitely you guys, once again, <laughs> way with like inspiration and what. Well, we, we've always been kind of tied together somewhat here and there and everywhere, you know? <laughs> ah, that really wasn't too long ago. That was that, that um, the story of their goth night thing. And oh, I nice. kind of did a, I did a, like a, a solo song or two, and then I did a live painting thing too. Yeah. Oh, that's the classic times. Yeah. Of course, the Jupiter Eight. Uh, could you understand this thing when you paint it black? I don't know if I could. Oh, we didn't really. <laughs> it was just kind of like lost, and you know, it was crazy. It was just crazy, you know. But oh yeah, the thing about that was, you see, when I painted all the gear black, and because a lot of people were getting their stuff stolen, right? Right. Yeah. You want a black uh, piece of gear. Warehouse place like that. 
and everybody got their stuff stolen. They never touched my stuff because they couldn't pawn it. It was just black. So that was my idea. Is like you know, if they they, they can't really steal it because it has no vision, value anymore to to resell. Absolutely. So I put my scent on it, shall we say? Yeah, absolutely. The Commodore, the Ardo Mondo sure. Cabaret. What a night that was. We got banned from the Commodore for life on that one. Oh, no way. What, do, what did you do to get banned? Well, when the art, art was on stage and he was up behind this great big, it was, it was a performance art night mostly. And we kept waiting to go on stage because we were supposed to be, quote, the headliner. But uh, all that really meant was we just sat waiting around drinking. So by the time we get to the page, uh, Art behind the big shadow curtain on the stage for the performance stuff decided to take a pee. And, <laughs> and you could see it just like the, the, the silhouette of the boy in the stream, you know? They didn't like that. Uh, I, for some reason, decided that I should take off all my clothes and, nice. and throw garbage on the audience. And Buck and me got in a fight on stage and he hit me in the head with the bass. Uh, as he said, I was farting around. And uh, basically, by, by the time all of this took place, they'd had enough of us. And so <laughs> literally, we're searching for us. And we actually got out of there alive and in one piece. And even in the book on the Commodore, um, the main fellow of it through those years went, he kind of forgot that we were banned. He, he just, they, they had asked him, who, were the, who had the worst fans ever? He said, the brain eaters. <laughs> <laughs> But I got, we got back. I got it's back there and played a few, many other times, you know, in shows. Yeah. To be notorious. Yeah. Um, oh, it, should, it, it should still actually be on tape at the uh, Video Inn because it was oh, really? back then. Yeah, I've never seen it, but it's supposed to be there. Okay, that was our very first record um, with Ian Tiles on drums, Art Bergman on keyboards, Buck Cherry on bass, Dave Gregg on guitar, and me on vocals. Um, what a mega group. Yeah, Dave was working at a print shop, so he just stole all the envelopes. And well, you can see how the rest is, you know, there. And and I think we, I don't know, we didn't print a lot of them. I think we printed 1,500 of them that sold them all. Apparently now they'll go for like 60, 80, 100 bucks, you know, if it's still got all the packaging posters. Yeah. It was 1975, right? No, no, that was actually, would have been 79. because oh, 79. 79. Okay. And that was the record came out that night. So we actually got our first record out that night, got banned from the Commodore that night and broke up that night. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a lot of activity for one night. It was. But, you know, in those days, it just seemed to be par for the course, part of the legend, you know, and, and the party was on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hi, Hi cool girl. Yeah, you got that. Yeah. Now that was. uh Steve and me got uh, got that one out. We did the posters and the silk screen. Those are silk screens that came with it. It was a 45. I want to drop the record here. All right. Okay. Yeah, no, this is a classic. Yeah, that's I mean, a classic. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to have this one. Yeah. I think, you know, I, think this is I think we had Chris Crud on the drum machine and uh, on the 808. And we had Ron Rays was in there too on the guitar things and stuff like this. And uh, Steve and me were the rest. And uh, that was, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Is that gonna, are you going to play some of that, you said? Or just? What's that? No. Oh, OK, yeah, no. Next question. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I, I, I still play this, this record. I think it's, oh. it's one of those you know, timeless records that doesn't seem to uh, to to a it's, it ages really well. I mean, I, I think that's, that's I think I played for someone just recently, and I and I felt the same way. Now here we got uh, I hear where are you. So uh, again, now now I Steve and me aren't working together, and I basically got still got the brain eater task cam four track uh, we had, and the half track machine. I still actually have the half track machine. I'm gonna be sending that into a shop next week to get. Uh, brought back up to life. It's not that dead, but she, she, she's, you know, got her, she's a little that way right now. So she's got to get fixed up a bit, you know, but I'm going to get the half track machine back. We did those, uh, I did that on the four track and, uh, and that one we did, uh, 
that was with Andrew Graffiti and me. And we went into uh, Mushroom with uh, Dave Rave was the, the mixer. He just got his graduation papers. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I got the after hour, midnight hour special. And I said, I got this much for the recording and I got this much for the mixing and that's it. So in two <laughs> nights, that. <laughs> yeah, so that was Andrew Graffiti and me. And I used that picture there because I thought it was kind of hilarious because that was me passed out on a, one of those studios we were talking about earlier, passed out on the floor <laughs> at the end of the party. <laughs> Sandra taking the picture. Okay, uh, boy, uh, this one here, yeah, um, the the cherry red one. This never really got released. Um, and, this one, this one. Yeah, and that was um, kind of that. Love me tender was kind of like take off on the the El old Elvis one, but it was kind of more like a hyped up good cop bad cop type beatero to it. And then the other side was Modern Man, which you helped do the remix on um, Terminal Ricochet oh. soundtrack. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I did a remix with Rave of Modern Man, but yeah. it didn't get released? Uh, well, the, the, the record really didn't. It's kind of like petered out here and there. You know, there was only about 500 press at that time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, now that's the first record there. That was a poster that came in with it. And as you can see, we were, we were kind of like a, a, a punk rock New York Dolls thing, you know, but on super duper speed, just like faster than fast. That record. I don't think anybody could quite like understand quite that. You guys were like so ahead of your time that it was like literally, you know, it was, it, you know, it was like, let's catch up with Jim. <laughs> and that was the greatest thing about you, too, is that, you know, if you ever ran into you on the street, it's like you're the sweetest, most personable guy ever. So, you, you know, you 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 had um, all this great imagery and you're like really you know, powerful and everything. But yet, when you speak to you, you're the sweet, sweetest guy on earth. Well, most I'm, modest guy. You know, I like you. I like you. You know, it's all good, you know. And I, I like the uh, uh You know, but then in the mind, you know, you get these more wound up visions and energies about things and some of this. And we tried to do as many as possible. That last one you put up there, that was a skinny, that was a point of six album cover I did. Put yeah. And that, that, that uh, oh, that's a longer story for another time, but it's got a good story to it too. But actually the funniest part about it was we had just, um, I hadn't quite finished it and it had to be handed in like Monday to go to the press, uh, you know, to get photographed and pressed and they were pushing me like crazy. And, and we actually had this gig in Edmonton of all things. So uh, the oh, band, nice. Evo and Trevor with the equipment drove up and then, uh, and I actually flew up because I was still working on the record. And then as soon as the next morning, I had to fly back and finish the record after the gig. And and the band, the guys were mad at me because they thought I was being luxurious. and so. Forth. But basically, it turned out all I was getting paid for the album cover went in the plane fare. And to play this gig where everybody was, where my band was mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, and, but you know, the album cover turned out good. I was real happy. I did the photos inside of the guys and stuff too, and pretty well the whole package of it, you know? Um, and yeah, yeah. But, uh, isn't that like one of the, sorry, the sorry, first sorry. challenges? One more thing. One more thing. We get to the, we get up there, the play, the hall and it's burned down. Oh no. They stuck us in a high school and we played to like 10 kids. <laughs> <laughs> And then they hauled us to a party where, and I hadn't eaten in like 36 hours. And, and I went, don't worry, we got plenty of food for you. There was no food there. There was just booze. They, everybody in Alberta or wherever Edmonton we were was like, oh, Edmonton in Alberta? Or still in BC? I forget. But all Al, they had, uh, Alberta, yeah. All they had was the 40 pounders of, of, of vodka and whiskey and rum and stuff. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. It was the old day. Way, but, I, but I had to be on a plane at seven in the morning. So basically, all I did was hang out at the party until I left and went back downtown and went up to the airport and go back on the plane. And all along, basically, you are just keeping up with your art. And, um, yeah. and it's kind of like a dual. I mean, yeah. you, aren't, you aren't just a guy in a band. You're a guy in a band, but you also are immensely creative on the side. Yeah, well, Is that I, something I, I, that's just in your blood? Yeah, yeah, I just do it, you know. 
I, th that was one of Bernard Wallace. Now that's a different event there. There I'm doing a little live painting on the spot uh, for the painters and players game. That, that was fun. I do those now and then. The one before, oh, there I'm building the unicorn up the Brackdale Art Gallery in the mid seventies. Going back again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There I'm in. Yeah, I had to finish the back back in time folder for you. Because yeah, yeah, Art Perry picture there over there. <laughs> There's, there's, uh, there's a there's a me in a, in the Manhattan basement apartment cooking dinner. <laughs> looks like the classic craft dinner. Oh yeah, uh, one night we were leaving the love affair, and we got jumped by some thugs. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh no! And, and uh, basically, uh, I kind of took the worst of it. Um, and the and, well, it's, that's another story. I don't, uh, you know. Uh, oh yeah, there I'm still in the Langley and, uh, and um, fantasy days. There I am with Big Daddy Ed Roth. Uh, Look at that. Yeah, you know, Rat Fink and all that. He, yeah. This is actually before he had his kind of um, renewal thing where he's uh, um, top of the pops with the Juxtapose magazine and the whole scene that way, you know, the lowbrow scene and stuff of this. So there he's at Dodge Plimley with nobody there. Art Perry and me go out there to meet him because I because Art knew he was my hero. He spotted this. He took the picture. It's an Art Perry photograph. And there, um, Big Daddy and me are exchanging T-shirts. God, what a classic. Yeah, I mean... And he was the sweetest guy and he was big, you know, like uh, yeah. you're a tall guy, you know, so he would kind of make you, well, he was a bit taller than you, you know, and yeah. plus he was twice the size of you too, you know, and his hands were like baseball mittens and stuff, you know, but just a super nice guy, super great guy. Montgomery Cafe, another Art Perry photograph. That's that's the classic gym look right there. The, the gym. Yeah. Is, that's gym every day. Jim didn't dress up. Just as Jim every day. <laughs> that was me Just every day. Montgomery Cafe. Yeah. The classic old place, man. And that wound up in uh, Canadian Art Magazine. They did an article. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, should, that you know, there's the some, something to be said about ab about the originators and you know yeah. the, the 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 stuff that you uh, that you do, and it's just so interesting, man. Like along the way, um, where to take it. It's like, I think um, Gary Smith and I met you in uh, 1983, was the very first time we went to that warehouse in, uh, in Gastown. And you were working on some, some works down there. And we bought, we bought this statue. Yeah, yeah. And this, 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 your sculpting is also amazing. I mean, it's like, it's not like you just are gifted at painting. You're gifted at carpentry. You're gifted at building everything from what surfboards to like violins to like <laughs> well monsters like this. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny. It's, look at that TV in the background. So oh, I, this, this was home at my parents. Home at my parents' house. About this was a, yeah about 1983, oh, and wow. I brought this home, and my parents were like, "Good grief!" What? <laughs> I know, I don't know. It's just like, you know, I just come, I just got like a weird autopilot in me. It's just like, okay, let some of that out. Sure, here it is, you know. So I'll go through um, let's see, uh, let's see here. We looked at that. Oh, yeah. We'll get back to that in a second. Yeah. Um the the collection here at the house has grown immensely. Um all the way from, I'll just go through them. Uh, I think the first one I got was this one, the same day as I got the, uh, the, the that statue, Gary and I bought those both. Mm -hmm. And this face has been kind of iconic and it, it's shown up in a lot of pictures over time. Yeah. Uh, that's four by four wide. Yeah, that's a big one, yeah. Four feet by four feet. I know. Um, that's a self portrait, isn't it, Jim? Yeah, that was a portrait. That was from the Love yeah. Affair uh, show. Um, thing that that I did where it was just kind of this very androgynous period and, yeah. and kind of mystical androgynism and stuff so yeah it's the date on that is 1983 when we bought it we, we it was the same year as the year that, and it's kind of weird to look at it now and think like you know that that's like 30 38 years ago 38 years that's just crazy yeah oh that's a good one I haven't seen that one forever so, I went over to your house one day and you were working on last rites. And yeah. um, the first thing that you um, were working on was this painting. Oh. And I was like totally blown away because, uh, here it is here. Um, like you kind of expressed that, that, that you weren't entirely 
I, 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 I went over a little while later and it had been put aside. Uh -huh. And then later I picked this up when you sold, um, you used to sell like little spare parts and ends yeah. at, um, at, at some of your shows. But man, this painting is one of yeah. my favorites of yours because for me, for, I always have dreams where I'm on, on mountains that are too high to be on. Yeah, cliffs yeah. that are too high and i'm always in this predicament yeah but yeah. i i love the predicament here that it's like you are you're, 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 you're like season the moment you know you may be in a difficult predicament but you're kind of like season the moment yeah but yeah. every one of your paintings the thing i love about them is the fact that the details you put into the mountains is there a story about the mountains that you uh i was kind of it was just kind of i love them that's all you know it's just sort of it's, I just wanted to see them on canvas that way, you know? Yeah. You know, and so I'd, I'd stare at the stuff a long time, you know, and then I'd start painting. Oh, yeah, there we have it there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know. Um, Check the mountains again. I like that sometimes, a lot of the times too, you know, and and it it's, you know, like I had a girlfriend once and, and she said, I told her some dream and she said, that's what you dreamt. You know what I dream? I'm looking for a space to park my car in the in, in the shopping mall, and I can't find one. That's my dreams. And I'm going, well, mine are kind of like the, you know, like the painting there. And she went, but she wasn't impressed. Let's say <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's how I dream. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this this painting. Um, yeah, that one too. Yeah. Oh my God, Jim. So this painting is. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's six feet by five feet high. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's pretty huge. And yeah. um, I wish I could have got a better shot of it, but the room that it's in is not very well lit today. Oh, they're, hard, they're, but, hard, they're hard to photograph. Yeah, the, um, the day you, I, I came to visit you and I remember that you had painted this and I expressed interest in it and you, you practically gave it to me. I mean, it was like almost should have been an illegal price. I won't go into detail about what that was. But I mean, basically, I ended up walking this thing home. Ah. And walking up Robson Street with this thing was one of the most funnest things I swear I ever did. People are like looking at me like, what? What's going on? <laughs> but this, this thing has been the centerpiece of my living room for quite some time. Yeah. Wow. So, you see, well, quite, you, quite you, you're the person to have it. And so I'd rather have you have it, you know. And, and as a result, you still have it. And we're able to do this here and now. So that, and, that the price was perfect then. You know, look at this magical journey. They're in, they're still in perfect shape. I guess this is yeah. the back cover of Spasmolytic. Um, this is the obviously the front cover. Yeah. Um, we saw the last rites painting a second ago. That one has a little bit of a lighting thing. Mm -hmm. uh, behind me throughout the chat, you've been probably oh. noticing uh, the, the Hilt uh, Journey to the Center of the Bowl painting. Yeah. Um, when, you, when you showed me this the first time, I remember I got to take it to the studio. I was just like, couldn't believe my eyes. If you look at it carefully, each one of these dots mm -hmm. on the uh, in the background, uh, it's it's almost as though they're they're a little bit like raised, like like mm -hmm. like like. Okay, do I have? I have to ask. Like, how do you how do you get into doing such detail with like such a? It's it's not really a huge painting, but there's a huge amount of detail. You, all we're brush. using like all brush. Yeah, it's all brush. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can see in the right hand corner, you can kind of see there by the light, you can see how things are raised. It's mm -hmm. just a texture, yeah. there's a textural. No, well, that's uh, just the thickness of the paint, you know, because uh, probably with that one, I would be using a combination of the regular oil paints and some of the one shot sign painter paints because they had really good opac opacity and color. And oh, God, that one, yeah, that's the detail of it. Look how thick the paint is on this one. Yeah, okay, this, 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 this one's like what I call the piece de la resistance of my house collection yeah. of gem. Yeah. Uh, got this one uh, in 1989, I'm gonna say. Yeah. These are parts yeah. of it. It is called Sunset at the Sunrise, if I'm mm. not mistaken. Yeah. And it is so big, mm -hmm. it is, uh, it's six, six foot two wide and eight foot four high. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Well, I mean, things haven't changed, have they? You know, all these strange the size of that painting in the, in that things, you know, 
Yeah, it was fun to paint with a really thick paint. It was a kind of a secret combination of formula. I, I remember you told me the story you came upon a bunch of guys fighting out in front of uh, the Sunrise Bar. Yeah. That, that was on Hastings Street and uh, decided to depict it into, uh, into the painting. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. The guy, the people's faces in the painting that you got are just so good though. It's like, like it, you know, it, each one of them is like. <laughs> one of my favorite things to do is just like, you know, I always felt somehow weirdly close to be able to capture that insane human moment of like things like that, you know, from yeah, yeah. moments to violent moments, though I don't really want to, <laughs> you know, we've all had a few wild We've all had a few dangerous moments, you know. Oh, luckily, I, I, I should touch wood, but luckily I, I have, I've kind of been able to skip it. Maybe it's because I always had stronger friends around me that, step, that stepped up like Dave Jackson or something like that. It would be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that one night we got jumped leaving the love affair. I wound up in the hospital from that one. Uh, oh, yeah. But, you know, I, I got away from the guy. They was trying to steal the leather jacket and, and um, and I own the leather jacket to this day. It hangs in my cupboard. So, you know, the, let's say eh, that's pretty cool. They didn't get away with it. Oh, there's our fabulous Phil. There's that a fabulous Phil smile. Myra Davies and uh, yeah, Myra Davies. Yeah. In, your, in your place at the... Um, Beatty Street. At, the, uh, at Beatty Street, yeah. Yeah. And this yeah. is what's wonderful about coming to Vancouver is each time uh, everybody, uh, sometimes uh, we gather together and have a nice big meeting. Oh, I remember right, Phil right? Phil Western arranged a, a meal last time we went to Vancouver, but then he actually could, couldn't even make it, but all the rest of us did. So oh, it was wow. kind of fun. Yeah. Nice, nice. All of us yeah. there backstage at the Commodore Ballroom. Yeah, that was a good night. Yeah, I like that yeah. one. There's the painting in the background in the yeah. classic yeah. old days. That's 1983 when we first got it. That'd be uh, myself, Bill Lieb, Gary Smith, and Big Earl. Earl lives in the neighborhood. I, I've seen him. Does now. he? Yeah. Oh, wow. I haven't seen Earl since, man. Say hi to him for, for yeah, me. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's married, kill, get children the whole bit, you know? Oh, yeah. There is that. The, this is a fellow who just picked up these pieces, just, just a recent uh, friend of Gary's. Yeah. That and then uh, also, yeah. oh, yeah. That one was done in 77. Oh, wow. Yeah. Before, just before it's, the thing, it's, it's actually it's looked like it'd be some Rolling Stones cover or something like this, you know? Wow. So I noticed that the, the colors that they used in the 70s were more of an amber-esque type of thing. You can kind of almost like recognize it from the colors. It, it did, were you, ex have you obviously been experimenting with paints and colors ever since oh. throughout your career? Oh yeah, well that was kind of a little more of my, I love Rembrandt and stuff like that, you know, but I also love everyone like Maxwell Parrish and stuff, you know, and so, and that's a little more down that direction. That's the one Gary got, that's a big one too. Uh, poor Gary, uh, he, he, he saw it at the show, not this Christmas, but the Christmas before, before the COVID madness took place and it wasn't done and I, and he said, I'm buying it. And I said, here, and he put half down. And, and then he said, I'm, and he said, how long? And I said, oh, probably two weeks from now, I'll have it done. No problem. You know, well, one year, three months and two weeks later, <laughs> <laughs> it was done. Yeah. Well, look at the detail. Gary sent me oh, pictures yeah. of, the, of the detail. There's little cats everywhere and everything. It's yeah. Yeah. But I can imagine that, um, I mean, does it take a long time to, to do stuff and then sometimes not a long time? Is yeah, it, yeah. Is it you, know, it's, you never know. Like, I must walk by that thing a thousand times and go, I got a pain on you. I got a pain on you. Right. You know, and then I finally just said, OK, I won't do anything until it's done. And so then that's how I got it done, you know. And uh, but I think the COVID thing was it was like kind of the first time in, you know, like 50 years of painting where I actually uh, slowed down, took a break for a while, you know? Yeah. 20 other unfinished paintings right now waiting for me. Um, but, uh, you know, I did a lot of the small printmaking stuff and things over this last year, just to fill in that way. That's a cute one, too. I like that one, too. Yeah, uh, this one's in our bedroom. Oh, nice. um, this one is also in our living room. Oh, um, one too. Yeah, this, great. this one is also five feet wide and three and a half feet high. It's really hard to get a a grasp of it and and then I again my camera again mm. cannot capture the the vivid colors their colors will emanate in the room and make the room glow 
Yeah. It's kind of like green beauty. But I always love this creature that you paint. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like a winged type of like thing uh, flying around these, again, the mountains, which, you know, is beautiful, perfect thing. But is there a story behind the 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 creature that has the wings without any it's, it's without kind of my dream thing it appears now that it seems to be blind but doesn't seem to have any trouble flying or <laughs> from one place to the other but it has no eyes you know right uh there, there's a there's a there's a kind of a little bit of a story there's a brando movie a tennessee williams uh story um i think it's called something like the rebel con not the rebel kind but it's something like that and he tells of the story, Brando, and the, he's a drifter. And in, and in the story, he tells this woman, wonders why he's a drifter, about this bird, this kind of glass bird. It can never land. It has to always keep flying because if it lands, it'll break and stuff like this. And that was kind of him. And that kind of, you know, I painted that before I ever heard about that. So when I heard about that in the film, I was like, yes, okay, yes, I'm getting, you know. So it's always kind of like bits and pieces and, and mystic things and some of this. And then I'll discover something I didn't know nothing about that I was going on about that was actually famous from something. And I said, it is what it is. I don't know, you know? I just try not to get in the way of them when they come. I always love how like your paintings have the have just that right amount of like um, clear coat or lacquer and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the amount, I guess you've had plenty of years to experiment with clear coats and paints and, and all sorts of details. Have you reached the ultimate combination of like what no, paints you it's really like tricky that stuff. Clear coat? It's like if you go really glossy, you get it, it'll yellow on you after a while, which can be oh, a really? real, if the colors of the painting are golden, it is and greens and gold, ain't gonna matter. But if it's kind of like blues and stuff, it kind of looks like, uh oh, you know? And then with, with, the, with the smaller stuff I've been doing lately, I really got into using the clear coat you know, epoxy, urethane, whatever, casting stuff, right? And right. you put on, you take a torch to it, take out the bubbles and stuff. Now that stuff's pretty cool too, but it can give you troubles too. And so like on Gary's piece, it's varnished, but I put really thin down coats to make sure um, I didn't have a problem that way. Uh, <laughs> there, there's me being a character with some of my character paintings. It was kind of like... Uh, kind of a walk down crackhead lane there. Um, and uh, some of my strange girls, again, there's a poem for that one too, actually. I wanna put that together in a piece soon. And uh, that was, was uh, back in the days when you met me there, that was that kind of- It's like a compilation of a bunch of print stuff. Kind of off of some big paintings and stuff like that. That was that big painting there. And that's just, you know, across the strange plains of life from nowhere to nowhere, you know? We ride. Well, look at that creature in the back there. Yeah, yeah. I did a whole series of paintings with those things showing up. Yes. Yeah. That's the, what I love. It's like this, like alien world that is like, you know, it's it's surfaced with these mountains and and wondrous imagine imagine imagination, like just. Well, I didn't love this stuff so much as a child, and I swore that when I grew up, I'd try to be able to create more of it and take people to places that way, and somehow. When I do them, it's just as if it comes alive for me and I go there, you know? Um, this is a character I came up with when I was in high school, actually, though the painting was about, just from about 10 years ago or eight years ago. And um, the original character is the, uh, well, you'll see, you'll, 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 you, might, you might even have them up there, but yeah, that's a story for another time. Oh yeah, my two blue cats on Mars, yeah. I have uh, that one back there too. Yeah, it was, it, originally it was, uh, Painted for uh, Aquariums West. Uh, you probably remember that pet store in Vancouver. Oh, sure. Yeah, and Cam and Jeannie, there's great people that run it and so this and always really good to the animals and stuff, you know? And they were getting me to paint like a Christmas picture for them. So uh, that was apparently one year, the two blue cats on Mars. I love that one. Yeah. Well, I, I love all your, I love, the thing I miss, the, you know, when I moved from Vancouver 23 years ago and the thing I miss most is like, your art shows they were they were so much fun oh man you know like just coming and seeing like what you know that happened regularly enough that that basically yeah. you'd be i was always blown away with how you were capable of like coming up with so many awesome 
things in such what I what appeared to me to be such a short period of time. Well, it was. I mean, basically, I was pretty driven to do a show every three months, you know. Yeah. And, and I love the attention. If there was a ton of uh, people there loving it, that was at the Underground on Robson Street and and Granville there. The, the Stephen and Charlotte had the store there, and they gave me a section for an art gallery. So we had an art gallery down there for a while. It was really nice. Really nice. That's when you were getting into the shapes, the blockheads, and all that yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah. You know. And your black and white series, man, is just impeccable. I mean, I've all, I just uh -huh. love all the, all the noir sort of stuff. What do they call that? Is there a name for it? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a seventies one there too. That one was sold up at the Brock and Dale Art Gallery. Not That's a very clear picture of it, but you can see the landscape and doing things yeah. with the water and stuff. You know, can't wow. quite see creatures coming out of the water too well, but you know. I that, guess we're getting back that, into the early ones here again. That's my first punk, one of my first punk rock paintings. Uh, I had gone around with everybody I was meeting and taking photos. And then from the photos, I did the, these paintings. And that was, uh, there was a gal there in her place. Yeah. And sculpture too. Jim, I've always got to say, like, if you make the sculpture, like, you should make it into a toy. Like, seriously, yeah, yeah. And, and you, you're the perfect candidate. Well, make, I, I, I've, got, I've, I've got a little gift for you when when, when I can get it to you. I have a neat okay. picture I just did it recently, you know? I you will get it. Oh, Dave Gregg. There he is. Uh, uh, the <laughs> piece was bigger, and there's more to it. That's kind of a close-up of it there. But, yeah, I, I basically met Dave Gregg at, uh, at the DOA house, passed out, <laughs> and uh, got his picture there. Later on, he joined the band. Uh, that's just a little detail from a fantasy painting. I... I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> Is that seeing the future, maybe? Huh? Seeing the future. Look at that haircut. Yeah, I know. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Uh, early blockhead painting, you blockhead. know. It was kind of like, it, I when we were down by Woodward's, Woodward's? Not Wood, Woodward's there. Yeah, it yeah. was kind of like the wintertime, and it was like, still when the street was like a normal street and people would come down for Christmas and they're shopping and it's snowing and it's slushy and raining. And I just saw everybody grouchy and fighting and, <laughs> and they came from there. that was a, another sculpture I did. I, I made a mold of that one, made about 20 of those, I guess. You know, that was about yeah. two feet tall or more. There I'm cutting out new stuff. You see, I got the bandsaw going. I've silk screened the print and, and painted the MDF board. Now it's getting cut and pinned. That's one thing I love about like um, the stuff that you post is that you um, you're super active on posting um, like kind of like your stuff that's in the works and it's yeah, I think yeah. it's really interesting to see like how how you go about making stuff and yeah. you know how, how um, what type of work goes into it because I don't think people realize that you know when you're making these shapes and you're making these things that you're doing like 100 percent of the work you're not like you know just like picking up a piece of shape pieces of wood you're cutting out that wood shaping it sanding it you know doing all the the work to get oh, yeah. it to to the to the you know yeah it's yeah. yeah. so interesting each um yeah each, each phase yeah. of being able to see you creating yeah your sculptures yeah uh, pieces you cut out or mm -hmm. the leftovers or the what shapes that you're making yeah you got a batch uh, of those. how many you make and then you'll just be like a production line yeah yeah and if i don't and i do it all and it's just easier to work all by yourself really than it is there's to, a secret yeah you know i can get look at the brushes up. folks huh look at the brushes there folks that's his secret I know, I know and then i stick them on old pallets afterwards when they're no good and glaze them up and sell them too awesome yeah they're all gone yeah there i'm blasting out the silk screens for the next project you know where did you learn to do all the silk screening and stuff like that? Did you, was well, it like? Just a little bit here and there through the years, you know. Um, uh, worked with uh, David Cran, he and um, Anthony Cito a little bit, you know, but I knew everything pretty well from almost the high school days, right? You know, they'd kind right. of, and then Kent Peterson, you know, They'd fill me on on which equipment I should buy and stuff like this and how a little few more things that way. And we went along like that, you know, and the next thing you know, 
I mean, and also too, I kind of like keeping the silk screen thing going because it's kind of like the West Coast punk ethic, you know, uh, garage band type things before that. Just um, we'll do it in the garage. We don't need anybody, you know. Right. Yeah. And then that way you keep your freedom and you use it, you know, funny enough, you work 10 times harder, perhaps, but then you don't get you don't go broke or anything like that. You can always create some more, you know. And uh, so, and, you know, oh, yeah, I got asked to do a violin of recent. I did a big bass for, for Brandy uh, a few years ago. And then this fellow had seen that and wanted to do on this violin piece that he was building. So I did that. I bring your violin. How about that? Yeah, you know, put it this way. <laughs> uh, no, no more, please. <laughs> Very nice to done what I done. Let's see. Oh, this yeah. is one of my. I just absolutely love this one. Um, uh, it's it's big again too. This is a, another big one, isn't it? Well, actually, I'm pretty sure I pieced together the picture in Photoshop. I think oh, okay. you got as much as the the girls on one side, uh, rocket ship creature bushes and stuff on the other side. It's it's basically the rest was me having a little Photoshop fun. So so just the I don't know, Jim. I think like you. I mean, in my house, you're the only artist that I have paintings by. So I guess you must be yeah, like my really favorite. No yeah, my favorite artist. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, and that was a bunch of more stuff I did and char other characters I did for Aquariums West and stuff like this, you know. Look at the difference between this world and this world. That's what I love. It's like you can never expect where you're going to go or where you're going to take it. I know. It's just, I just, it is like, oh, we're going in this way now. Okay, click, put on this outfit. and Right. Then it all comes that way, you know? The surprises yeah. were always great. It's like you could never say you, that, that you do, that you're just one thing. It's like, it's, it's yeah. Like, I mean. Um, oh, there's there's Kika putting makeup on me for, I don't know what we we're doing there. It was, it was a gig coming up, an art show coming up, or uh, I don't know. <laughs> The classic eye brain eater logo. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. man. The, in the days, like the, the 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 leather jackets that had that on it, like were the coolest leather jackets ever. Yeah. Well, they, they, and I even did Cam, Cam Cam with his Bomber Brewer company got me to do the the pumpkin ale there. So that was a hit. That was fun. Wow, look at that. Yeah. I never got one of those. Oh yeah. Uh, well, Susan Suzanne Tubada, uh, who made the film um, Bloody But Unbowed, she had me paint her back of her jacket with the, the logo on it there for when she went to Japan for showing the film for a month. I got a great picture of wearing it down the streets of Japan. Nice. Yeah. Oh man, look at a that. landscape now and then, you know, you know, sweet times, you know. Just 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 a landscape, yeah. Or now this is a mixture of airbrushing, isn't it, with uh, yeah. brushwork? Well, actually, to be truthful, the painting was a painting with its own background, and then the monsters behind it were a really big airbrush people piece I did, and then with photographs I photoshopped them together later. Yeah, but yeah, and I think black and white. I think you know, I took care of both my my parents so they passed away at the house and stuff like this, and already came photo that's a good one, and basically. After that period that they're gone, I, I was painting, but I found that there was just nobody in the pictures, you know, and yeah. they, that kind of period there. Yeah. Uh, that's a big one behind me there. That's a, uh, you know, I, well, I know the background's different. And then I did a few, every now and then I love the movie stars, so a little Marilyn Monroe, you know. Just classic, though. And there's a bunch of the characters all waiting for their next, uh, big scene with you know half, half the time I always wonder how you make them because it seems like so do you I gather you do screen printing of your stuff onto works and then paint on top of that mm -mm. no like those would have been all original characters um I I would basically take a whiteboard of about on those well, it'd be a whiteboard probably about 24 by 30 or 24 by 24 and basically um, very well pretty well take like a pencil so you got a little more flow and kind of get the main lines of the character in then maybe a sharpie pencil would be a little more definitive or that line went off a bit so let's push that one over here and then with a 
kind of like a sign painter brush or just a nice thin little long sable brush and one shot sign painter black then basically go and um and then draw the black in you know and and kind of a one shot thing a little, little bit of pre-thought not too much just kind of like okay yeah let's go we're going we got one you know some of those would be almost just about out of the blue but there's usually a quick line or two underneath just so i don't get it wonk off the one side or right. something it just looks so symmetrical. I mean, it's yeah. kind of like, a, I, I'm thinking like if the time that you must spend doing all this is just like, well, it should be accounted for basically. Like someone should pay you a little bit more than. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's it, you know. Look at that creature there, that creature there next to her, what she's looking at. Huh? That's what I love. Look at that guy next to that girl there. Yeah. This is what is that? Thing that seems to have degree of empathy in them and she's you know understanding you know there's uh, a return to the flying creature yeah the yeah then it's back flying. into the photoshop and and processed up some more and played with oh i remember there was a club in vancouver i'm trying to remember the name of it um it was uh that one that came along that they graciously said we need to have a painting in the in the open in the hallway, right? And then you was it that you did a painting of 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 how you saw the scene? Yeah, 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 that one, yeah, because yeah, this was actually just from about two years ago, actually. Oh, this really? It's a big one. It's like thirty six by well thirty by six feet, I think. Yeah, or something at least that big. Yeah, that was done live at the. Uh, uh, at the art show, one of those. Oh wow! You did this one live. That that, that would yeah, have been something I, I to see. Yeah, I picture just at the end of the evening. Uh, I would go back and work it up more and define it better, you know. Yeah. But uh, but that was just live right then and there. Yeah, yeah. That was. I live. always I always love these series of yours. You know the <laughs> the drawn characters and the. Yeah, work. I got I got to do some more. Spend a little while there, you know, and. And the cutout things and stuff. I mean, hot rods. And yeah, like I mean, thing about you know, it's just like that was a big one. That's a that's down at the chapel place. Um, that that kind of um, club art show place down downtown. Um, this guy he bought it off me. Um, that that one's like four by six for for a certain. That was a and that's called the black spot. You know, and if you ever seen the pirate movies when you. Receive the black spot, you're in trouble. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. And the detail on this one, again, I mean, again, it's not predictable. It's completely new for mm -hmm. the things that you do, but like, it's, it's just so, I don't know, Jim. Well, it's that one so there, you know, okay, that was another one for the pet store place. Uh, but this one here, you can't even see the level of detail and the different levels of colors around each square and particle. It just was quite insane. And I remember, when I was painting it, uh, Kent Peterson dropped over, Chris Peterson's brother, and Kent comes over and he, he looks at the painting and goes, oh, broke up with the girlfriend, eh? <laughs> he goes, well, every time you break up with a girl, you start painting dots. <laughs> yeah, we broke up, yeah. Do you have any idea how long this one took you? Too long. The, oh my God. Yeah, the picture is like, really have no bottom, you know? That you know the classic thing they go. Does an artist finish a painting? No, you abandon it eventually. Right, right, right. So this one was months, months of uh, yeah. It's like I mean you it, you you know you really have to see these in person because you know the pictures here are are just simply that pictures. But if you see them in life, the the shine on them, the detail, and the layers of paint are. Mm. are really, really well, interesting. Kind of this ancient art of glazing, where actually a lot of times. You paint, let's say, you, just when I understand, and this applies to, well, I mean, like you see a face, you got a face, you paint it in the best you can, and then with a little bit of a uh, varnish and a little tint of color, you might paint on one side. Oh, there's the baby rabbit being character. He has a whole story yet to come. That was pen and ink drawings I was doing for a while. But, you know, you mix it with the varnish and stuff, and you paint this glaze over top of it, so it gives a glow one side and a coolness the other, and then you just keep painting transparencies and the transparencies are almost in a way like uh, could be like um stained glass windows so when the light like you say that big when you have was well, a good example of the green skies is that the light comes into it 
hits it, goes through the paint and the varnish and comes back at you like a stained glass window. And that you, you can't get a glow like that any other way. Just painting it that green, it won't look right. It doesn't have that. That's where the transparencies come in. Yeah, and, and the way I do the glazing and stuff like that. That was a big one too. That was a big uh, six by eight foot one and all the shading. And I, and I the, say the purple you look at there on the monsters, that's not um, faded. That's actually a solid tone of one color outline the whole thing. And then the next layer out a lighter tone of color outline the whole thing until you get to the highlights, you know. So wow. those are actually, yeah, there's a lot of work there, yeah. Um, Man, this series is just, I love that. Dwayne had one, I think, mm -hmm. that went back to his family. So, but it was like, yeah, the things that you can see in them are. This was a weird one because this is a repaint of a, that was a repaint of one I did in the Langley days. The original was actually like a smiling mouth. The frame was cut like a smiling mouth opening up with that stuff in there, all in color, color with the oil paints, not too big, about this big. And basically, uh, <laughs> what did you say you will put it this way uh everyone dabbles it was it, it was it was kind of like oh a little time with the with some acid you know and uh you come out of that and you kind of go uh what'd you see jim how about this <laughs> <laughs> man that is just so perfect though yeah yeah and then that's a lot black and, black and white one was an airbrush of it done bigger later yeah here's yeah. the uh, yeah, that's a live one too. That that's um, that's a that's a unicorn twice live <laughs> at the Brackendale Art Gallery. There I'm in the garage, you know. Uh, uh, stuff going. There's another one too. That's kind of a dark one. Well, of course it's a dark one, but you know, <laughs> uh, she's just uh, one of those terrible girls you could get drawn into that would not really bring anything good to the table in the end. <laughs> Say no more. Say no more. I uh, did a, the, one of the last shows right. I did at the studio downtown was this kind of take off some Bowie, you know, just sort of like change the setting, change to this a little bit, you know, and just kind of paint our hero, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's, that was a series. So that's just, a, um, I did a bunch of really freaked out guys and stuff like this. It happens now and then. Uh, other graphics and stuff for sure so that's a Langley one as a kid you know kind of like the you know we were going to see Alice Cooper and stuff like this you know at the Coliseum oh yeah did you go huh did you go to the Coliseum and see Alice Cooper I think that was amongst my first concerts I ever saw in my life well the one I said we didn't get to see I didn't get to see Killer I missed the Killer right. uh, but the next time he came to town I went I made a big paper mache top hat and actually I was up the front and I gave it to him and he wore it for the show Oh wow! Was that the billion dollar your billion yeah. dollar baby show? Oh wow! And then the next show we went into, uh, it was he had his big toy box he was crawling out of, and he um, he slipped and fell and broke his leg. So, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I was at that one. That was the first one I was able to attend. Yeah, that one. So that was Susie Quadra opened. Remember? Yeah, yeah, classic. And, and and my buddy, the Dan Clark guy I talked about earlier from the shows in the posters in the Grease Band days. He wore a white suit to that show with a with a top hat and a and a and a cane. And these biker greaser guys were looking at him, and I, and I was getting really scary, right? And then yeah. one of the guys, yeah, turned around, and pointed at the buddies, let's get him, you know. And Dan took this oak cane he had and clobbered the guys over the head and the shoulders, and they were dropping left, right, and center. And <laughs> I grabbed my girlfriend. And I said, "We're out of here. He's Danny's dead," you know. Because there, there she is in um, Japan with it. Um, there was just so many of them, like a hundred of them, right? And, I wow. said, and we were with them, so they were going to come for us net as this fight was exploding. And we pulled back into the crowd, and and I thought, oh, my God. Well, it would turn out when we left the show, Dan had broken into my car and was asleep in the back seat. Oh, wow. How did you do this? He says, well, when all that action happened, the bodyguard, the bouncers grabbed me and threw me out. <laughs> and I went, good God, these people were going to, you know, I thought you, I thought, you know, we were going to your funeral, you know, <laughs> it, it was so dark and spooky and scary, but Susie Quattro is great. <laughs> oh yeah. But, but her audience was beyond dark, you know, 
up there, that show. I remember those days being like, yeah, they were scary as a, I mean, I was a kid and I, they were You're a little scary. Old, you know? Yeah. They're, yeah. There we go. And I can paint that too. <laughs> <laughs> Some great uh, Bowie stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, it's so much to play with the work that was already done on them and try to do an honor to it, you know? So I always try to, you know. Pretty classic. I mean, uh, I don't know how long this uh, thing goes for, but yeah, as you can see, we could just look forever at Jim's Jim's work. It's just so much goodness. Well, you know, I got to the point when I was pulling up stuff for you. I went, okay, I better stop here. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> I was finding a whole other pile of stuff and I'm going, oh no, 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 stop look at that. now. Yeah. I mean, the colors on that thing are just mm -hmm. unbelievable. I like them that way, you know. I yeah, like, the depth. You know. I just so this is another big, big oil painting. This one? No, no, that's your painting, but that's just re replayed with right, a that's, other artwork of mine in Photoshop and stuff. That's what I thought. I was like wondering, okay, wait, that's my painting, and then it looks like it's been like, yeah, altered. Yeah, but you know the thing is, you know, you get in the Photoshop, and the way I use it is just still like painting, so you can you can sink in for right. hours, hours, you know. Yeah. Uh, were, you, were you able to get shots of like um, most of the things that you sold or is there, a, yeah, is there uh, yeah. shots that you don't have of paintings that you have? There's a lot of things I saw. You got a couple that I don't have, you know, and, and basically I, I've got a, um, basically um, just so many hours to go through all the all the photo files and find them. And then usually I'm like, you do the picture isn't that great. And I got to kind of rework it up, you know, and. Next thing you know, you drop it into seven hours. I got a piece right now. I'm just trying to get finished. I just, uh, last night I went, oh my God, I actually might have that. <laughs> this was in Langley and this Italian guy from the racetrack, he wanted a, he wanted me to paint a, some Italian Spanish fight scene for him. <laughs> and it was really big and, and I did it. And I remember he looked at it with that kind of like, thank you. Oh dear. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so I, I, you know, I, I like this one. It was kind of like Bowie with the Tesla power coils and charging. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was done for a burlesque show thing. Doesn't that? Oh no, go back one. The the fish one. Right. I thought that was Ogre in the day. Do you remember that? Ogre thought that was him. What this one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this oh, one. That one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> And I went, eh, no. No. <laughs> okay, so I don't care. You know. No. Uh, that one there, that's a, um, I had a, uh, I called that one Gone. And uh, it's a little fuzzy in that picture, but it's really quite sharp and clear. Yeah. Um, and a uh, fuzzy it's picture. Just, you know, like when we lose friends, you know, that we've been losing so many, you know, they're just gone, you know? Oh my God. Yeah, man. And that thing in the back right around there is just kind of looking into the ocean, sort of like, you know, and you're like, right. come on, you know. Yeah, I know there's been uh, way too many um, lately. Uh, oh, God, yeah. It, it's just starting to get to be the point where you really got to appreciate the days that we have. Yeah. And that's, that's why it's so great for me to be able to sit here and be able to just chat with you mm -hmm. right now because, you know, both of us in our 60s. So it's yeah. basically how'd that happen? <laughs> who knows? Yeah, how'd that happen? You know, it's like <laughs> faster than than anyone could ever and think. Bullet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, but you know, all I mean I have one of those. Yeah, I got I got I put one on for the day there. Jello used to wear one all the time too. That's back to the Langley kid days and stuff in high school, I think that was. Um, but you know, is is I just tried to be a painter that painted you know. the world around him, the feelings around him. Maybe not, you know, a lot of the visuals, but a lot of the emotional feelings, a lot of the energy, you know? Mm -hmm. And just try to capture who and where we were. I think you did too, you know? And that's what we do, you know? We capture our time in the way we capture it. I think this is the one that Dwayne had in the studio. Oh, yes, yeah, it is. I think so, yeah. yeah and then, um... I went back to Edmonton with his family. It was like, um, oh, yeah. yeah, that Dwayne owns that. Okay, we'll take that back. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was like, yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. a scary thing to have. 
Yeah, I know. The big air, I mean, like, just give me an airbrush and the way I go and a couple hours later, they'd be there, you know? So did they start speaking to you at one point or, or did they, has it ever been that you've made a painting that actually scared you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There was one point when I was still in Langley, I, I started painting these demons that seemed like they were coming through the canvas sort of, right? Oh, and yeah. This world. And I actually destroyed those. I, I cut them up and burned them. Really? I, I stopped Speaking a little too loud. I thought I felt like a portal, you know? Yeah. And I went, no, I can't. I'm not letting you through the portal. You're not coming through, you know, because it seemed I seemed to be getting more and more fine tuned into doing those. The more I did them, the more they seemed to be appearing and coming through. Right. And I didn't want to be a portal for that. You know. So do you have to try and avoid that if that if that starts to happen when you're painting? You'd be like, wait, I'll turn it into a to to a rabbit. Because it's turned yeah. to it's, it's yeah. going demon. No, demon, you are a rabbit. You're a rabbit. I think we can work with the rabbit. Yeah, we can work with it. <laughs> but some of the other stuff, you know, and that's just like very, you know, out of the blue, quick. That was a live painting, dreamscape thing. That was still Langley days, Langley days. Um, and I just, you know, I, I was pretty lucky to be fearless. I didn't really care. Just, you know, uh, that's a little modern day character. That was originally painted live and then reworked up in color and stuff later on. That's amazing. Thanks. Yeah. And it just looks like, like another big one. Yeah, it was a big, yeah. I, I remember painting it live going, oh shit, this is big. <laughs> <This painting. laughs> There's a mod, there was a fashion show going on at the same time with one of Bernard's uh, event nights, you know. That was a neat one. That was a, I did myself up like a blockhead, you know, with my strange blockhead and a blockhead ja leather jacket and stuff. Man, like some of the um the live shows in the in the uh in the later period, you you um, like at the love affair when you when you performed live there and you built like the entire hey. um, the, the 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 entire blockhead stage. I mean, pretty amazing. I got a picture. Got a picture. Looking of back on it now, but you know, we were just also crazy. Just like we got this chance, let's do everything we can do. You and know. you guys really did do it, man. It's like at the love affair. Um, the whole place was kind of transformed into your vibe. Yeah. Well, um, I think one of the things that kind of saved me was probably I was so busy trying to get this work done and created because most of my friends were partying hard, right? Yeah. And, and uh, there, there we go. We just, we just lost this guy here. Kelly just passed away last week. Uh, oh no, this really? Guy here was just wandered into it was at Graceland that show he wandered in he said what's going on and then and I said oh this we're doing this air band thing with my music and he said wow I said you could be the bass player here and I gave him the big cutout and he was uh oh there and and he got really excited and he said afterwards you know uh I was walking down the street gonna kill myself today and I went oh really and he said now that I've done this with you guys no way I'm living, you know, no, I never seen him again, you know, but that was kind of cool. Yeah. I thought, and, uh, yeah. yeah. So are you still playing? Well, you were playing live up until, um, like the last little, you're still playing live, right? Phil was yeah. playing with you. Yeah. Well, I will be back with it. You know, there was some, there was some issues, a couple of things I don't want to talk about. Um, but that was me solo -izing it there, you know, but um, Elvis uh, Presley, kind of a dark, <laughs> dark zone with uh, some people I don't even want to discuss. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that's oh, yeah. dealt and done with. So now it's on the new better. Um, I mean, I was able to get um, a few of the Brainer songs recorded with Phil and a really good drumming session he did with it. You know, he was such a genius with that. You know, for and, sure. And. Uh, so we got those things put away. We'll see what we can do with those. Um, and um, we even we, got to perform with you. Huh? Download when we played in Vancouver. Yeah, you, wasn't that you fun? The, it was a great night. You were the guest, you were the guest vocalist. Oh, you, you, I, I want to pre, I want to thank you. I appreciated that so much and had such a that great time doing that. You know, that was so fun, man. You, you, you showed up and then you, you had again, you had an army of uh, people dressed up in costumes. That I had no I you didn't tell me or anything, and all of a sudden there was like 15 people running out on the stage all all dressed in black and stuff. I was like, what's going on here? It was great. It was great. Yeah. I mean, there yeah. that's with 
Is that that night? Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. I think this yeah. is a different night. You and That's a different night there. You and Philip. This is like the, uh, I guess, the more yeah. recent uh, yeah. uh, outings yeah. here with uh, Phil and. Uh, that was just Phil and me. The, those were good, you know. Yeah. And uh, there we did a synthesizer show night with uh, uh, Ham and Phil and me. Uh, that was at the rickshaw. Uh, that was a Bernard. Fat <laughs> yeah, that's fun. That's a Bernard thing. That's funny because the, I love how it's like crossing over to like, you know, the, 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 the to this crew. I don't know yeah. what you call this crew, but I, I find it very sensible. Yeah, and then that was uh, Kitsilano days with Tony Baloney playing with me. Tony Baloney, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's us again at uh, the yeah. same show. Uh, yeah, there. Before you came. That was a great night. Jim, uh, Jim, you're ageless. How come you never age? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Too many paint fumes. That was that line. Is, it, is, that, is, that, is that what it is? It's paint fumes. It's, 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 this way, it's yeah. A, you know? the, key, the key to, to success. <laughs> yeah, I'd be in trouble without the paint fumes, you know. <laughs> so I gather that you also must have um, had a, just a bunch of people approach you and be like, "Man, I got a tattoo of your work." Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see those all the time in Facebook, especially from you guys' work, you know, from the Two Dark Park series, you know. I did. It's 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 crazy. I mean, I I wish I could find more of them, but uh, you know, the amount of tattoos that I've seen from people is just is astounding that you know they'll mm -hmm. you know, show send you pictures show you pictures of oh, that's great stuff. Yeah. basically uh you know your 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 work is on the skin of so many different people yeah yeah it's, I'm, it's, I'm a wimp I, I i'm i'm i don't like needles so i don't actually have any tattoos you know yeah kevin i have no tattoos on me at all really nothing is there is, is it the same sort of thing as me it's like you just think like you don't want to needles aren't your thing or <laughs> well yeah and also too and i and i don't want to sit still for that long you know right and you think and like i've got something better to do today other than like like uh you know get somebody drilling into my arm i'd be like i, I swear i can think of five things better you know and also too, <laughs> as soon as i'd get it i go okay get this off of me sell it to somebody get it i you know i would never want anything long enough you know i make stuff yeah. And, and let go of it. That's what I do, you know. So it's putting something on me that stayed there would just drive me nuts. Oh yeah. I do have one tattoo. I'm lying to say I don't really in a way. Wow, look at that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> look at. The, uh, I don't know if that's for real, but you know, if that's for real, it's just that's cool. the logo gets around. Cool. Yeah. I, and look at that one there too with, the, with Joey's band. Yeah. So it, 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 shirts. In about grade eight, uh, this kid actually stabbed me with his pencil on the bus which gave me a little carbon graphic pencil tattoo on my leg. So <laughs> who was that? Joe stabbed you in the leg? No, no. I was just this crazy kid back when I was in grade eight that I tried to avoid as much as possible. And then of course, one day he has to sit beside me in the bus. Right. Yeah. Of course he has to go psychotic and stabs me with his pencil. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one. Actually, I, 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 okay, I don't want to, I shouldn't go up, but, Back in the Buddha days, we were so much, so wild, flying around, landing on our, you know, I, I was messing up my knees because there was so much, you know, damage from all the shows the way we were doing them. And I always, for years, for like, for 20 years, I had a little bump on my leg, on my knee. And I used to figure it was kind of like kind of a water bump from hitting the stage so hard so many times built up there. And then when I started playing with it. And one day I was playing with it and the thing popped open and out came a great big square chunk of beer glass. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. I couldn't wow. believe it. it just, yeah, like, I, I think that's possible. It can exist inside your skin for like years. Yeah. Honestly. I don't remember getting it. I don't remember, you know, but yeah. out came this great big, you know, about quarter inch square. Of that's crazy. Beer glass. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that's the total of my body, you know, maybe a, a pierced ear or two, you know, and that's about it. Yeah, remember I, this show? I remember though when Steve and me were doing the, the brain eater thing in, in '82. Um, we were seriously contemplating getting our ears pointed and stuff like this, and and oh, having yeah. hair transferred, you know, hair plugs transferred from our hair onto our arms to like 
have hair growing out of her arms and stuff like this, creatures and stuff like this, but we never had enough money to do it or fame to go for it, you know? Can you imagine, folks, if that had been the case, the, the style of punk rock could have been changed forever? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you remember this gig? Yeah, that was a great think, one. Uh, this is the same as this. Skinny yeah. Puppy, Eye Brain, Eater, Eye Brain Eater, and the Sex Pigs. I believe this was our second show we ever did. Okay. And uh, we had a fantastic time playing with you. Yeah. Um, now, was I, I remember... with Andy Graffiti that night? What's that? Was I just with a drummer? I'm not sure. I... Oh, with us or with you? That was at the... Uh... That was New York Theater. Yeah, yeah. I think it was just me with, uh, there was no sex pigs by the time the show came around. I think it was just me with Andrew Graffiti. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it was Andrew Graffiti. Yeah. I'm and pretty had, sure about that. And I had a little tiny amp, but when it got mic'd by the sound man, it was a gigantic big amp, you know. Of course, there was a difference between when you turned in the album with the last rights, you drew it like that, and then they put it like that. Oh, poof. <laughs> Yeah, nice electric set. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's just, it, it, it's, a, it's such a difficult thing when you, oh, there's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, lots of uh, times, uh, uh, you know, uh, just, I guess it's been cemented into goth history, hasn't it? It has. You, you guys, yeah. yeah, yeah, we've got it, you know. It is so now. Yeah. I ain't bad for some sort of kids from the, then, I guess you, you must have a lot of questions about Two Dark Park and the covers or the cover. Mm. Uh, let's see. I got a good picture over here. Oh, you, you made the mask for Ogre uh, for the show for Melody Maker. I, I got the guys the mask and I literally left for Amsterdam the next day. I was booked that in the chat for this performance art thing. And that's a tale for What's me. that doing there? Uh, oh, that's yeah. Ramp Rampage and Duff some Pinhead and... Uh, What's his name from Guns N' Roses? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was like all the old Vancouver boys, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they used to, um, they used to, Duff was coming up here and he was like about 15 or 16 and then Zippy and them would go on runs into, oh, there, there's some of the artwork there, yeah. Who are Mud, those guys? That's Mudvayne. Okay. The of Mudvayne has a skinny puppy logo tattooed yeah. on his stomach. Wow, there again, eh? Yeah. My cat loves eye brain eater. <laughs> All right, this is good. To know. <laughs> this is good. This is a good thing. Oh, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't seen the painting in person for a long time. I hope that you know where it's being kept. I but, um, no, I don't. I think Rave has it. I think it's out there. Yeah, but I. That's yeah, out there. Yeah, it's a shame. Um, it's such a work of art. Again, it's something that you need to see in person because the yeah. detail again, yeah. the shine and the, the kind of like the depth of the paint is just so. You know, it's legendary. I mean, I, I'll never forget the first time I saw it. Yeah. It just changed my life pretty much. <laughs> There's DOA again with the skinny puppy thing. I into the studio that when I did that. What was that? Oh, look at that guy there. Uh, cool. Yeah, there's somebody so who's bizarre. got the logo. It's so bizarre it's, seeing your artwork done by someone else, you know? It's, it's quite an honor. Hey, do you remember the time that we all, we all had Volkswagens? Uh huh. Yeah. That's Jim's Volkswagen here on the far left. It, you would you would chop the top yeah. off it. Yeah. Then one of our other friends had this nice nice one in the middle, and then I had this one over here. It was actually white. Oh, cool. but we yeah. We cruised together in a gang and took and, and took this photo one day for this uh, Hills album cover. Oh, but, cool. Uh, those were the days, man. Did, how long did you have that VW for? Oh, you know that. I wish I would have kept that. That was just kind of like you know, like sometimes you things take place and then they're gone and you go, what happened? I know. Back, you know, um, uh, it's gone. I think, um, I think I <laughs> talked me out of it, you know, uh, but I, but it, it, it slightly escapes me. But yeah, but you still, I want to do, more stuff. I have an old 54 DeSoto I've had for years now, which I, hopefully this summer will finally come into its glory. You know, it's parked out in the front. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted to build something like, see, that was fun to cut off the top, you know, rebuild the back boot, you know, and it was just sort of like, it was coming along really nicely, but kind of like a learning curve, you know? 
at the time. I definitely always like what you do to your cars. You seem to like always get like a, a an older car and then make it your own. Mm -hmm. That's de definitely something that I've always enjoyed. Well, you uh, have a beautiful bug. You, you, yours is perfection. Yeah, I have a 57. Um, that's the only car I've ever owned, which is really weird too. Well, I had a white one before that, but uh -huh. um, yeah, no, I've, and then now when you're driving around, you, I'll get more comments on that thing than you can handle, you, you know, drive up to an intersection and be like, what year is that? Well, I used to have a 62. Oh yeah. Like, long conversations with people. But you kind of funny. beautiful. I mean, you, you, yours is a work of art. Totally. You know, but you have, what, what do you have now? Like an old 54 DeSoto. We had a lot 54 of 54 DeSoto. Nice. You know, because it has a Hemi engine in it. Like they use in the dragsters, right? What? So, really? 60s, they took the, this is like basically the happy days car of his dad, right? And yeah. it, then the 60s, they pulled the engines out of these things, junked the cars, and then um, used the Hemis for dragsters uh, at, at the drag races. And then on top of it, they would pull off the manifold, exhaust manifolds, and put headers on them. So when I had to replace the, um, the, the, the uh, exhaust manifolds, you couldn't find them anywhere because they just they'd been all turf decades ago so luckily um a year ago my cousin um mark um and his buddies that do the dragster actually um did a real thorough search and found a pair for me down in oregon because and we got those on and that's great because we were it was literally like you drive for 15 minutes and go uh, I don't feel too good. It's <laughs> coming in, you know, <laughs> carbon dioxide. So th that solved that. Right now, we're, I'm just waiting to put the transmission mount back in. That's gone on it. So there's a bit of, you know, no, you know, I want to break the transmission off the motor. So, but the motor has been shot. It's been inverted from six to 12 volt. Right now, she's looking a little, little, little rough on the outside because all money was spent on the inside on the mechanics and stuff. And now I'm going to return as what is getting better and make her a pretty, pretty, bring you there. Draconia is her name. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be driving. I'll be driving her by the summertime. Yeah. So if people want to see a, a, a show of yours and want, and want, <laughs> by the way, hi from the kitty. Yeah, there we go. Hi from the kitty. <laughs> if they want to see a show of yours and then be able to see some of your original artwork or be able to get a chance to, to buy something as, you know, as cool mm -hmm. as one of these things. Mm -hmm. um, is, is there going to be a, a show coming up, or do you have you have any info on the future? Well, follow me on the Facebook, Jimmy Cummins on Facebook. See what I get up to. It's all coming along. Um, hopefully, um, lots of stuff on shirts and lots of prints and stuff. Uh, I was doing a bit of shipping last summer with stuff, but I I have to admit I hate the shipping part because it's just a big pain. But that, I understand you got to ship sometimes. But yeah, yeah. art shows are going to, we'll see how the COVID thing goes. And I think with, you know, uh, end of summer by fall, we'll see. Something will happen. If not, it'll be online. Uh, right now, like I said, I kind of use the, the, the year to kind of catch up on, like get the studio set up and working and things like this. fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. And, and everybody's, everybody's doing what they should, you know, you know. Uh, after Look at that. You got a Model D there. You got like a Matrix Brute. Yeah, the Matrix got there. Uh, what's down on the lower thing there? This thing? What's on the lower shelf there? This Looks one? like a Moog. Is that a... 37. Moog. Um, Pro 2. Um, Model D. Uh, Ooh. Arp Odyssey, just the, the gut the, without a keyboard. Drum machines, ancient 60s drum machine that was actually the same one used on with, with Oh, I love those, man. Really? Those are rare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was lucky to get Try and find one. Huh? Try and find one now. It's like the, the, the price has gone crazy. Yeah, I walked in the bone rattle one day on um, commercial drive, commercial drive there, you know. Uh, and there it was, and I gave him 150 bucks and it was mine. That's perfect. So what 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 DAW you like to record with? Ah, uh, well, I don't like Pro Tools, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yay! I hate Pro Tools. I like Studio Idology. Yeah, I like Studio One. 
Uh, <laughs> have you tried Studio One? Pesaurus? Studio One? I like that yeah. one. Easy drop and drag, you know, pop, pop, where it goes. Um, seems to have gotten better with every update. Um, I got Logic. Uh, it's okay. Fine. Good. Uh, Cubase. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, and then, uh, but I got all the uh, universal audio uh, plugins and stuff like that and power that nice. way. Yeah. And so they got their new one, Luna. And I've got it on there. I haven't really gotten into it so far too much, you know. But they yeah. came out with a really good rendition of Model D that plays in that unit. And uh, so, but basically, I've been more of a sketchpad person with recording this last while. Kind of like, okay, I can make that work. Okay, is that going to be a song? No, no. Just, you know, so, but hopefully I got to, I'm just kind of reconvert. It used to be, I would do everything without knowing anything. Now I've kind of converted to knowing not everything, but a lot more and not getting much done. So now I got to kind of switch somewhere in the middle. I know enough, but I actually make a product. So actually last night was the first time I actually took some recordings here, took them upstairs, put them on the stereo there and went, oh, okay, that actually is working, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's, 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 that's a really good way to look at things. If you know too much, it kind of becomes less interesting. If you're struggling and trying to create something that maybe you don't know all the answers to, or don't know where you're going to end up, it might be uh, it might be uh, the reason why you're following or doing it in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I look back and I was I was just playing Davy Street last night off of uh, I hear where you and I went. Oh, how did I? Well, I certainly made that work, but I certainly didn't know what I was doing. You know, right. you know, and then. So, you know, and I've been practicing trying to make more out of the voice in terms of, you know, notes and stuff like this. And so, and I kind of got into writing melodies, which was uh, interesting. But then, uh, and now, now I'm a fuss pot. So I got to make sure everything is done just right. And, and I got to get it out. So bear with me. It's on the way. It's, <laughs> it's great oven. news, man. Look yeah. at the studio. The studio looks fantastic. It looks like things are like certainly uh, going to come out of that room, I would suggest. Yeah, really that, you know, just, you know, just roll with it. Go with it. I yeah. want to hear it. Yeah. And um, the same with the art shows. I gather that when the COVID world uh, ceases down a little bit, that there'll be a possibility for uh, people to get out and see oh, things yeah. publicly yeah. again. Well, I mean, we were having a, the house here and they were just, I never had them so good, right? You know? We'd get a couple hundred people would come in. They just go, this is the best. Um, Cause you know, they, they love it. They get to see everybody, you know um, and it was going really good. And then COVID came along, but you know what? You're talking to the guy who's basically done three to four shows a year for 40 years, you know? Yeah. It was okay to just slow down a little bit, you know? And yeah, for sure. Stuff, you know, clean up, organize, you know? Because literally, I would create and create a disaster and just shove it in the boxes, you know. And so now has been a time to kind of get through those things and kind of go, oh, okay, oh yeah, right, you know, focus again. That's 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 a really good um, thing for everybody to think about now is is, is uh, to consider what Jim just said and apply it to your own world. I certainly um, am trying to do that to myself as well. It's you, taken a little while to get back into the swing, even if they say that we're all going to be okay. I think it's going to take a while for, for me to get out of this uh, relaxed system that I've got. <laughs> I've learned how to sleep in very well. <laughs> yeah, you know, me too. I used to, I, I used to get up at 8, 8.20 every day, and now, and now I, it's 9.45, so it's like it's definitely changed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 10, 30, 11, 30. <laughs> but you probably stay up later. No, I wasn't even doing that. I'd go to bed at like at midnight, and you know, and the next thing, you know, but, you know, I need that for my dream state, my magic dream world has come back. You know, it's, it's like I was like I'm back and just out of high school, you know, and I'm just lying in bed and sleeping and dreaming, you know. So I needed that kind of catch up period because there was a well, you know, we went through so many people passing. Uh, my family passed away. You know, my friends, so many of my friends passed away and how you deal with it and digest it and present yourself in that period and what you can do and what you can't do and how you come out of that it takes a lot of energy. And, and I then, agree. Yeah. I, I found that the biggest challenge this last little while is um, it's kind of like, well, with Phil's death, it kind of like opened that 
that door again where I was like, oh, here, here, here that comes again. Like a yeah. really close friend dying. And I'm like going, I remember what when Dwayne died, how it, it really was, you know, years for me to, to get back to feeling normal again. Yeah. And I said, I can't, I can't let this happen again this time. So, but I, I have felt it like the, the, the sensitivity of like um, the times of now adding all the numbers of all the people you add up. It's like, oh, him, 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 him. And you start realizing, wait, I'm one of the only ones left. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's kind of scary. I know. So yeah, um, I think the motto is, is just to just stay uh, as you're doing, Jim. You look yeah. fabulous. You mm-hmm. look healthy. You, 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 you're, you're killing it all the time. It's been an honor speaking with you today. You too. Um, honor with you. Thank you ever so much. It's been great. I, I absolutely, uh, absolutely um, just am, am so, so honored that, 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 that we can do this. And um, I, loved, I loved it. I love you too, brother. Um, have a good, uh, have a good day there. And uh, thanks to everybody for joining today, especially uh, from the Patreon and uh, everybody from the world of art. And Jim, all the big to you. Put the keys, put the keys to keep, put the keys to work there in the studio and we'll see you soon. All righty. Later, folks.